Welcome to St. Stephen's High School Television. I'm your host, Jim Belton. Today, we have a very special guest, Daryl Cole. He's currently in our 12th grade, and he has brought victory after victory to our school in national and international competitions. He has brought us awards in Math Without Borders and the Australian Mathematics Competition. He was on a three-person team that brought us victory in the Sipnayan and the Matarong Matabai, the most prestigious competitions, national competitions in the Philippines. Most recently, he took first place in the European Mathematics Competition. Well, before we get started, I'd like to talk a little bit about your background, Daryl. Oh, when did you join St. Stephen's High School? What, what grade level were you? So, I joined St. Stephen's High School when I was in kindergarten. So up until now, that makes 13 years being in this school. My goodness, wow. Well, that's, that, that's very interesting to me because I, I want to tell you, Daryl, yeah. my dad was in the U.S. Navy. So when I was very young, uh, we moved every two years. So by the time I was in the 12th grade, I didn't know anybody that I went to kindergarten with. So many of your current classmates went, went to Kearney Garden with you. What, what is it like growing up that way? I mean, you've been going to school with, let's say, Johnny Don since kindergarten. Does that make generally make you fonder of Johnny or less so? I mean, being in the school for such a long amount of time, of course, my relationships with my fellow classmates have developed a lot. So... I've definitely become more fond of them. Uh, yeah. Well, good, good, good. Daryl, you're a math genius. Like, you should be doing my taxes. So <laughs> when did you say to yourself, hey, like, math is my thing. This is where I'm going to spend most of my time. I mean, can you tell us how this intense interest developed in you? Well, I think it started when I was in elementary. I realized that I was quite good at solving problems. Uh, I could think of solutions quite quickly. And I got quite high scores in my math test. So that was when I realized that I might have a thing for math. Yeah. Well. Some of your math skills, they have to be pure talent, right? I mean, if, if you're operating on the level that you are, uh, you obviously have a certain amount of talent in that. Uh, God gives each of us talents. Uh, some of them is math. That's what you, uh, maybe uh, you have some classmates who are fantastic on the, the basketball court and that's their talent. But I have to think that a lot of it, it also has to be sweat equity. Equity. Um, I assume that you work really hard at math. So how much of your math ability do you ascribe to innate talent? And how much of it do you think is, is really effort? Well, I think a majority of my skill in math is attributed to the amount of work I put in it. So I do practice a lot for math competitions. And uh, yeah, so... A big part of my skills in math, I think, would have to be attributed to hard work. Genius is 90% perspiration and 10% inspiration. Yes. That's what my dad always told me, but it seemed he was always telling me that when, I, when he wanted me to work harder at something. So, so I, didn't know if I, didn't, I didn't know if I should believe him or not, but that, that plays into... Uh, to your beliefs about uh, what's happening with you in math. Yes. Sir. So is math for you mostly, like, is it mostly work or play? I mean, is it this massive chore that you happen to be good at? Or do you just like 
enjoy playing with numbers. I mean, you just like enjoy thinking about math and doing it in your head and that kind of thing. Well, I'd like to say that I really enjoy math. Uh, usually, I think of math as a series of tasks that need to be accomplished. And when I manage to accomplish these tasks, there's really a sense of joy and accomplishment that comes with it. And even if I don't get to accomplish these tasks, there's still a sense of there's something new I need to learn, which really ties in well with my love for learning new things and discovering new ideas. What's great is when you actually enjoy something that you can later on get get paid for. That's that's wonderful. I know. I know a lot of people. You know, they just they love they love doing music, and of course, you can get paid for music, but it's it's, it's hard. It's 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 very hard. Uh, they some people just love to write. You can get paid to write novels, but it's it's quite hard. But uh, certainly, the the world is just looking for people who who have mathematical skills, who can really excel in these technical areas. And it's just, uh, it's wonderful when you can find, like what you said, you know, joy uh, in something that uh, so many people really are, are looking for help in. Yeah. Well, a couple of years ago, uh, you and several of your classmates, um, Emmanuel Bolete, Monica Menlises, one, like I said before, uh, the Sibnayan and the Matarong Matabai is a team for St. Stephen's. And these are the like the pride, the crown jewels of national Philippine competitions. And the three of you have been competing as a team uh, for several years. Uh, we like to put people in little boxes, right? Uh, the, these are the math geniuses over here, and these are the 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 basketball, at, at, you know, athletes over here. But, uh, you know, as I look at you guys, yeah, you guys are quite different, actually. Uh, I know Monica's in student government. She dances. Uh, you're, you're a very quiet fellow. I have you in one of my classes, and I know that, that uh, you're not exactly a, a chatting Kathy, so to speak. So what's it like uh, competing on a team and What's your relationship with, with your teammates like? Um, yeah, so team comp competitions are very different from individual competitions in that, yeah, as the name suggests, you have to work as a team. Uh, the problems are usually, you usually have less time to solve the problems. So it really does force you to work with your teammates. And I think the sheer amount of competitions I've been in with them have really strengthened our relationship in solving problems together. You know, I, I never even actually thought to stop and ask you guys, but when you're doing a, like a, a team competition like that, is it something that um, they give you a certain amount of time for, or is it the first person who hits the buzzer, I guess the, answer, the first team that hits the buzzer gets to answer the question, or? How does that even work? Well, usually you're giving you're given a set amount of time, so it's not necessarily who who goes first. Uh, usually you're given around, let's say, fifteen seconds, thirty seconds, or even a minute to answer the problem given to you. So it's not family feud. Um, no, not really. And they don't play the, the big music, da 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 when, when, when you get it right? Um, no. Not oh, yet. darned it all. Oh, my goodness. Well, that would be fun, wouldn't it? I think that would be a lot of fun, but but maybe not very uh, mathematical, you know? So you, you have won an astonishingly large number of national and international competitions. And many of these international contests involved you traveling to foreign locations. Uh, that was before the, the whole mess of the coronavirus. So, so what is that like, uh, traveling to some of these, these foreign countries and competing in that way? So it's really a fulfilling experience, being able to travel to other countries, to experience the culture in those countries. It's been very insightful. And you really get to appreciate how life is in other countries. 
Well, that, that brings me to my next question, which, which is not which competition, but which, which foreign math competition was your favorite location and why? I mean, which, which country was it that you really, boy, I just, I really loved visiting this country. So that would have to be Singapore. I, I've been to Singapore several times because of math competitions. The environment there is really nice. The people are generally kind and the sites there are uh, very beautiful. That's, that is like not the first one I was gonna think of, but Daryl, that's probably because other than the airport, I've never been to Singapore. I, I sat in the Singapore airport uh, for an hour or two and uh, didn't really have a very good time there. But uh, it's, it's very interesting that you mentioned that, Daryl, because uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, I was, my father was in the Navy and when he was in the Navy, he traveled a lot. Uh, and he, he worked with NATO uh, quite a bit. And he, this is places all over the world. Quite a, quite a few of them were in Asia. Quite a few of them were in Europe. But he just loved Singapore. He said, he, he always said this, Singapore is the cleanest city he's ever been in. And he just, he just loved the place. He loved visiting. And he had a wonderful time uh, that he, every time that he went. So that's... Uh, it's interesting that you both had such positive experiences there. So your, your most recent victory was the European math competition. And like I said, because of this wretched virus and quarantine, you had to compete online. And so can you tell us a little bit about that process? process. It had to be a lot different than, let's say, going and visiting Bulgaria or something and that kind of thing. So, uh, yeah. Um... It's definitely a different experience taking the exam online and taking it on site. Uh, the setbacks that come up when you're taking an exam online include there's, there's a risk involved when you take an exam online because you don't know when your connection, if your connection's going to be stable for the entire period of time. If something goes, goes wrong, then it could become really bad. Um, the second thing is, you don't, as I said earlier, you don't get to experience the cultural aspect of actually being in the country. So, yeah, it was kind of sad to not be in Bulgaria to actually experience the culture there. Yeah, well, that... I, I can really see how that would be a, a very trying experience and uh, disappointing, you know, that you can't go and visit foreign lands everywhere. That's one of the things I really love to do is to go and visit far flung countries. And it's kind of a disappoint disappointment when you can't do that. And I, and the, let's just face it here in the Philippines, we, we do have a little bit of trouble uh, connecting to the internet, we we need more cell towers and more cables and more everything here. And uh, I think we were a little bit behind the ball uh, before uh, we decided to have all of our classes <laughs> online. I think the 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 infrastructure wasn't quite what it needed to be. And then we said, okay, everyone stay home for six months and do your work from home and all the students stay home for six months and do your, your, your work from home. And it is just a really greatly complicated and already complicated situation. Well, then finally, uh, Daryl, tell us a little bit about your future. I mean, you're young. Uh, the answer to these questions will probably change over time. But I mean, what are you thinking about studying when you go to college? Uh, what kind of colleges are you thinking about applying to? And uh, what kind of work do you see yourself doing maybe, I don't know, in, in 10, 20 years? Yeah, so right now I'm actually working on applying to different colleges aboard, uh, abroad. So US colleges are mainly what I'm trying to 
apply for now. So for the future, I think I might be taking either computer science or mathematics in the future. And as for a career, I'm not sure yet, but uh, I think one of the options I'm considering is becoming a software engineer. Well, I, I think um, I mean, maybe I've even talked with you about uh, possibly going to, to study in the US. Of course, we have some excellent universities here in the Philippines, but uh, especially in the area of uh, math and science right now. Um, if, if you were going to study English, I would uh, probably tell you to, you know, save your money. Not You don't necessarily have to go to the U.S. unless you went to some very specific colleges because uh, the humanities programs, uh, U.S. and the U.S., really the, the humanities programs all over the world right now are obviously an obvious decline. But uh, they're, they're uh, in the U.S., uh, the, the, the laboratories that are available at these universities, uh, the invention that's being done in these universities, the, the research um, is really, uh, it's top par really uh, in the US that there are some really wonderful institutions that are where there's lots of wonderful work being done right now. So many of the patents uh, are now coming uh, out of the U.S. and have been for some time. So it's, 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 it is really a, a land of opportunity in that sense. And certainly I think anyone who's looking at really cutting edge technology, it's, it's a really, it's a very, very, very good option. Well, Daryl, those are very ambitious plans, but you have uh, been very su successful so far. So we hope that God will bless you and all of those things. Well, thank you for being with us today. Congratulations on your recent victory. I'd like to thank all of our listeners uh, for tuning in to St. Stephen's High School Television. And remember, we are Stephenians moving forward together. <laughs>